Hi, I'm Madeleine. I'm Big Brother Watch's legal and policy officer. I specialise in the UK's emergency response to coronavirus and the impact it's having on our human rights and civil liberties. November has been an extraordinary month, with the second national lockdown, police arresting hundreds of protesters, the army getting involved in regulating speech online about vaccines, and the Prime Minister receiving up-to-the-minute reports from GCHQ about our Google search history and location data. Here's a rundown of the five major things you need to know about the government's authoritarian response to coronavirus. Number one, dodgy data. After a rushed national press briefing, England was placed back into a national lockdown with new laws being hurried through Parliament. This was a rapid change in approach from the tier system and was justified by alarming new data that showed that up to 4,000 people a day could die if we weren't placed into lockdown. However, this data rapidly unravelled under scrutiny. We would have reached 1,000 deaths a day by the end of October. Now, the average in the last week of October was 259, so the prediction was wrong before it was even used. Throughout the pandemic, the UK government has justified its decisions by saying it is simply following the science. But when the data it relies on is at best incorrect, or at worst deliberately exaggerated, it really damages trust in the UK government's decision making. There's been some rather overblown rhetoric on this. Talking about 4,000 deaths wasn't overblown rhetoric. There was actually some slides that were presented to the public. But Whether you support lockdowns or not, we all deserve transparency and accuracy about the way the government makes such important decisions. Number two, police protest lies. Protests have been lawful in England since the 28th of August, although protesters have had to jump through hoops. They have to take steps to make sure the protest is safe and carry out a risk assessment. However, in November, November, the Metropolitan Police misrepresented the law. They said there were no exemptions for protests and therefore couldn't happen the day before an anti-lockdown protest was organised in London. This statement misrepresents coronavirus law and is a threat to our human rights. We can't allow police to simply make up the law, especially when it comes to something as important as our right to protest. 150 people ended up being arrested at this anti-lockdown protest. We wrote an urgent letter to the Met to complain and set them straight on the law. We won't rest until everyone can safely protest. Number three, disability and face coverings. People in the UK are required to wear face coverings on public transport and in certain indoor settings, although there are exemptions for people with disabilities or if it will cause someone severe distress to wear a face covering. It's important to remember that not all disabilities are visible. People who are exempt from this requirement are not required to carry or show any evidence to prove this. This is really important to make sure they're not discriminated against and to prevent people with disabilities being forced to show their papers every time they want to get on the bus or go to the shops. The Department of Health has made this really clear, but many police forces aren't getting the message. West Midlands Police Force is one in particular. In October, they fined and handcuffed a man with severe asthma for not wearing a face mask. They were forced to withdraw this fine and apologise. But then the same thing happened again in November. What's the problem? I don't have a problem. Why have you got a face mask? I uh, have a medical condition. Is there a card that I need to get or that I need to get so I'm not required to have a card? West Midlands Police Force were forced to apologise again and said, We stated that it was a legal requirement for an exemption card or badge to be shown. This was incorrect and the officers have misrepresented the guidance. But a few weeks later it happened again. What is going to say? What it then does, you type it to court and you show your burden of proof then to the court. Telling a person with disabilities that they have to go to court to prove their disability is absurd, unlawful and discriminatory. Number four, workplace surveillance. The pandemic has been the perfect excuse for public and private actors to roll out new intrusive forms of surveillance of our bodies and movements. In workplaces, we've seen everything from hand sanitizer machines that use facial recognition to track, monitor and rate how many times you're washing your hands, to Bluetooth devices that buzz when you get too near one of your colleagues and then sends a report to your manager. We've also seen software being installed in people's laptops to make sure that they're working on task from home by taking screenshots regularly of what they're doing. It's never managers or directors who are subject to this kind of creepy spying, it's always ordinary workers. These new forms of surveillance are intrusive and they're attempting to micromanage employees' work days. Number five students. Students have borne the brunt of coronavirus restrictions, often paying vast amounts of money to be in tiny rooms far away from home and away from their family and friends. 
But not only have they been subject to national restrictions, they've also been literally fenced in, patrolled with guard dogs, spied on, and been encouraged to report their friends and flatmates to universities for petty rule breaking. We've had reports of police and security guards bursting into student homes, hoping to catch them partying, but instead finding them fast asleep or watching TV. We've even heard of security guards coming into flats to try and enforce social distancing or threatening to fine students for having a cigarette outside their own home. Covid marshals have also been harassing students up and down the country, despite having no legal powers. At the University of Manchester, a house full of female students reported that seven Covid marshals burst in when they were self-isolating to check that they weren't having a party. The Covid marshals then returned 10 minutes later to ask for their phone numbers, and then hung around in their front garden trying to look through their window to see what they were doing. Other female students have also reported that Covid marshals have threatened to report them to the police if they don't give them their phone numbers. It's time that universities reined in these security guards and Covid marshals and support supported their students instead of treating them with suspicion. If you want to learn more, you can read about these issues and other issues in our November Emergency Powers and Civil Liberties Report. We write these reports every single month and send them to all MPs and all peers in Parliament. We're urging them to follow our recommendations, defend human rights and stand up for civil liberties. And if you've been affected by any of these issues in the video or any other issues related to coronavirus, please contact us and we'll try and help you. If you want to learn more about Big Brother Watch's work or you want to support it, you can join our mailing list or you can join our supporter scheme and you'll get a free t-shirt.